Are you excited about a design? You go to lay it out and it's just missing something? You're tired of getting out the spray paint, the pen, and the paper, and it just not working? You even show it to your friends and get excited about what you've created and they don't believe in you. Are you lost looking for the missing piece and you just can't find it? These five design rules will be just the answer for you. It's not that dramatic. Today, I want to break down the five principles that I use for designing a hardscape space. With a couple million that I do every single week, I mean, give or take. We're gonna take these five rules and we're gonna apply them and we're gonna see how it all comes out. Understanding the purpose. Rule number one, how is this space going to be used? Is it for sipping on some coffee? Is it for having large parties and gatherings with all of your family, nieces, and nephews? Are there gonna be dogs running around and tracking mud and debris from the yard? It's important not to start the design process until the mission or understanding how the space is gonna be used has been established. Starting with the end in mind is very important. Having styles or designs that are attractive are a great place to start, but I wouldn't start with the actual layout out until how the daily use or the weekly use or the yearly use of the space has been established and created. One element that I'll use often is by pulling a hardscape off of the house. I don't like where uh, pavers touch the actual house if they don't have to. By pulling it off the house three to six feet, this actually creates a landscaped area, which might sound like it's maintenance, but it actually creates a buffer between the house and the hardscape, which gives you more usable space because if you push your chair back or you need to stand up or you need to get around somebody who's sitting at a table and you can just step into the bed and then get around it, it makes it a lot easier. If you have a hardscape going right into the house and you need to step around the back side of that table, you're probably not gonna be able to do it. Fire pits are also common elements in these hardscape spaces. So understanding how many people and who's sitting around this fire pit. So like a 12 foot circle might be okay for just a few upright chairs, like camp style chairs. But if you're planning to put Adirondacks and you're gonna need to go up to at least a 14 foot, a 14 foot circle can really only support about four Adirondacks. If you're planning on having two other couples or six people around the fire pit, you're gonna need to have at least a 16 foot. Having more than that, you need to grow to an 18 foot. Now this circle starts getting bigger and bigger, but depending on the type of chair that is going to be around the fire pit, it's going to determine the diameter of the circle or the area. Our purpose is established. Now we move on to creating dead ends. Rule number two. I say dead ends because if you've got a kitchen and you have to walk through the kitchen, to get to the other side of it. Now you've created traffic area and if somebody's there working and they're constantly getting bumped into or people are walking behind them, it just makes that space a little bit less usable. You also end up paying for valuable real estate, in my opinion, if you don't have dead ends. If you have a deck and it has three exits and two entrances, most of the surface of the deck is going to have to be traversed through. So where are you gonna put your furniture without blocking one of these entrances or exits? If the fire pit is laid out, but right on the other side of the fire pit is the seating area, now you have to walk through the fire pit to get to the seating area. And if you've got all your chairs around and everybody's hanging out and then you're bringing a platter of food and you have to walk through the fire pit, it just becomes a cluster. Try to flow people into dead ends. So you've got a pergola as a dead end, you have a fire pit as a dead end, the kitchen space is a dead end, and then the traffic areas are what allow people to flow through it. And this is your common spaces where you might stop to tie a shoe or you might just hang out for just a minute while you're traversing between the two spaces. I know the phrase creating dead ends doesn't sound like it's gonna create a space that flows, but I do believe it's essential to make sure that your furniture can be permanently put in a space and you're not having to walk around it. You can make a beeline right to where you're trying to go and it makes the space a little bit more visually appealing and it displays in front of you really well. Rule number three, organic seating. I'm not talking about logs or growing trees that you can sit on or having shrubs. I'm not even talking about uh, non-genetically modified seating. Nope, that's not what I'm getting at. What I'm getting at here is a place where you can easily stop to tie your sneaker, where you invited two people to come over and 16 people showed up, a way where not every single person has to have a formal chair to sit in. 
and still feel like they're part of what's going on in the space. Organic seating allows the space to expand and contract without actually having the larger square footage that you need to have tables, chairs, or benches. Low rise stairs out of the back of the house are one of the easiest ways to create this organic seating. So if you have a tread that's only about six inches tall and is maybe 12 to 18 inches wide, it's really comfortable to sit on this, especially if it's not just a four foot wide set of steps going quickly up and down. If it's a little bit wider, maybe as much as eight to 10 feet wide, now people can sit on these steps while traffic can still flow around it. But you also have a place where somebody can comfortably sit and they can put the food in their lap and they can sit there and eat because there's not a seat for them somewhere else. Seating walls are another great way to make the space easily expandable. While they're not comfortable for long periods of time, usually if a seating wall is built at about the 18 inch height, which is what a normal chair is, now easily people can sit there, put their food in their lap again, or you know just put their drink right beside them. I especially love seating walls for kids because they don't necessarily need individual chairs for each one of them, but it gives them a place where the mess can just get on the hardscape wall, it can get on the seating wall and they can just hose it down, but also you can line a lot of them up uh, right next to each other without taking up the whole yard. Capturing the senses, rule number four. When I think about capturing the senses, I go back to some of our primal need to feel secure, to feel cozy, to feel comfortable. A fire has this cozy element. We can feel it on our hands, the warmth of it. And I just think that that's a really important way to help us get grounded into a space. I'm sure you guys have figured it out by now, but I love water. I love how water can drown out noise. I love how it can surround and envelop a space. I think the ancients had it figured out. You know, they put fountains in front of absolutely everything. But I also see that water is something that attracts us and it kind of pulls us towards it. How many times do we see event venues or places that uh, draw crowds and they have a fountain out front? I see people standing in front of this fountain taking group pictures and memories. You know, Disney World's got fountains everywhere and people are always standing in front of these fountains getting their picture taken. I say this to illustrate the fact that I think water pulls us to it. I don't think it needs to be complicated, but having some small amount of water flowing transforms a space. Appealing design, our sight, which is an important sense as well, is important. The golden ratio or Fibonacci series is frequently talked about for creating appealing designs. If you think about the shape of a flower or a seashell, even actually hurricanes have this kind of spiral shape. I'm not saying to put spirals into our hardscapes, but what I am saying is that that ratio that we find where it kind of spirals down to a point, laying out spaces two by three, three by five, five by eight, eight by 13. These are all used in the Fibonacci series to create visually attractive squares or rectangles or shapes throughout a space. Lighting is also an important element to get our sight stimulated. I love a light in the water. So as the water flows over it, it creates like a candlelight flicker on the canopy of a tree. Low voltage lighting also helps us avoid floodlights and bright lights. Really goes a long way to capturing the sight sense. And the, the last easy to incorporate sense into a space is smell. Gardenias smell really good. Jasmine vines can be trained up over uh, some trellis or along a fence line. Magnolias also really have a great smell during the summer where that kind of just kind of wafts through a space. Catmint, thyme, these are perennials that you brush against and they kind of wake up. Rosemary is a great one. They wake up and they kind of uh, create an aroma through the space as you're walking. Ligustrum is an odd one that a lot of people don't think of, but the scent of Ligustrum while it's in bloom in the middle of summer is really, really awesome. Honeysuckle vine also is like one of those early spring bloomers that really just wafts through the air. There's not always a place for all four of these elements to get into a space, but if you have an opportunity, I encourage you to incorporate them. No curves without a purpose. We're not Forrest Gump just running just to run. The hardscape needs to go somewhere. It needs to connect. It needs to belong. Really, this is a pet peeve of mine. It is an opinion, but I frequently see where, where people try to just make the patio not have straight lines because they say they like curves, but it just ends up looking like this amoeba or this blob of concrete or pavers on the ground. One of my favorite facts is that a circle is a hard line. You can lay this circle out in a space, it has intention, it has purpose, and then you can have curved lines go into that circle. Now we have a place to focus, we have a place to put our attention, but it doesn't look just like a blob. 
This is something that really drives me in the creation of my spaces. Even when designing the most basic patio, I feel that all five of these rules can apply to make the space feel cozy, warm, or maybe grandiose. Tell me, was this helpful? Did you enjoy these five rules or are you just like, meh, he doesn't know what he's talking about. After all, they are my opinions. I'd love to hear what you guys think. Thanks for watching our channel. And hey, if you're feeling magnanimous today, drop a subscribe. Let us know you're watching. Next week, we're going to show you a time lapse of a really cool hardscape space we built. Until next time, I'm Micah Miller, and this is our channel, Easton Outdoors.